What's up guys, this is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater and today we are doing another project out here in Capel, Texas. And what we're gonna be doing is a living room surround sound system with a TV mount, patio TV mount, patio in-ceiling speakers, as well as a theater room with a 5.1.2 Atmos system and a 100 inch screen and uh, Epson E-Shift using the 6040. Let me show you what's inside this house. So our procedure is we're gonna come in and we're going to lay down a drop cloth and bring in all of our products to start. And we put on our shoe covers, to keep your floors clean. And let me show you what we're doing. In this. this is the space that we're working with. We're gonna be putting this Sony here up over the fireplace. And you can see this is all pre-wired. We have plates on the ceiling here, 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 and here which we're gonna be utilizing. Uh, we're gonna be putting in the Pro 16 RWs that have the rotatable 90 by 90 tracks of corn. And I'm gonna be using the 6040 center speaker up here. And we're gonna be doing a hydraulic mantle mount that can pull down to give them a better viewing angle because this is pretty high up here. And we're gonna take the Deftex and we're gonna be moving them upstairs into the customer's theater room. On the patio, we also have pre-wired speakers right here and right here and then tv is pre-wired here and we're going to be using just a cheap little indoor tv uh, this vizio that the customer picked up from costco it does the trick and then whenever it goes bad he's not heartbroken um, we recommend using a veranda series outdoor some bright tv just to give you the peace of mind but this also gets the job done so this is a nice little space it's kind of more of a multi-purpose room. You can see that it's not actually closed off. A lot of ambient light gonna be coming in from these big windows. So we're gonna be doing a 100 inch high contrast gray screen right here because the viewing distance is only about 10 feet. Everything's pre-wired, but we're gonna have to redo it a little bit based on how he wants to configure it. These terminations right here and here are gonna be pulled down the wall for the floor standing speakers, and these are powered, they have subwoofers in them. So we're gonna plug into the receptacles. And then right here is the structured wiring for either Smurf tube, if you're gonna be putting a TV up, or the center speakers there. So we're gonna pull down the wire for the center speaker down to here. Back of the room, you can see we have plates here, we have a plate over there, and we have the projector wiring as well. But on these plates here, I'm thinking I'm probably gonna have to rewire them as well down here, just to give them better separation and channel on the Dolby Atmos. Cause if not, they're kinda, these effects may blend in with our overhead Atmos, which we do not want. So we're just gonna use these little bipoles from DefTech that he had already owned. And we're gonna mount them right here on the wall. And then we're gonna use the Klipsch uh, Pro RCs, 16 RCs for our overhead Atmos. What this customer did is he bought one of our complete packages because it is a better deal. And he kind of uh, is separating out part of the package into the living room and part of it into the theater room just to maximize his savings because we do have really good deals on our bundles. So this is going to be a nice little project. All the equipment's going to be terminating over here. We got our work cut out for us. We'll be here all day. I'll update you as we complete the work. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is just go through all of these speakers and cut the holes and insert those speakers. Okay, so Grayson's unboxing the speakers that we're gonna be using. The exact model is the Pro 16 RW. Pretty well-built speaker. We're using it in this application because it has this rotatable tweeter. The actual whole, the entire horn rotates towards your target seating area. So this is probably the best solution for having a vaulted ceiling like this where the speakers really are facing straight towards your, not straight towards your primary seating. We can kind of compensate for that by rotating them so that when you're sitting here, it's enhancing the experience. It's still not gonna be as good as if you had your tower speakers or your in-wall speakers directly in front of you, but it's definitely you know an improvement over them firing straight towards the fireplace. And 
and that's your final product. For a living room situation, you really just can't beat in-wall speakers. They don't perform as well as floor standing speakers by any means, but they're clean. You don't even really see them. And depending on the quality, you, you can get pretty good performance out of them. Moving right along, guys, check it out. We got all of our end ceilings in. Actually, they're in walls, but they're kind of in the ceiling. Front left and right, rear left and right. All looking really sharp. Now, I got my fish tape put in the wall over here by the fireplace. We're gonna pull through our center speaker, our optical for audio return, our HDMI, and Grayson is out there on the patio working on the in ceiling speakers. Let me show you what's going on out here. You wanna show them your in ceiling speaker? Yeah. We're using the uh, Klipsch Custom Series with the nice magnetic grill and he's doing a little bit of custom work getting this etched out. You see how there's that little seam right there in the ceiling? He's etching it out so that it fits really nice and flush. Um, it's pretty, pretty difficult to do, but if anyone can do it, it's great. I got it. Perfect. And then uh, next we're going to cut in this one over here and get our TVs up on the wall. Moving along. Well guys, we're having a really fun time in here on this mantle now. I wanted to show you how custom I'm about to have to get with this. So first things first, there's no place, there's no like screw threads on the back of this RP640D. So I had to customize a couple little screws to go down in here on the hook where we would typically screw into the wall. And that works, but the next issue is, is that this bracket is too long. It overhangs, which would look terrible. So, I'm about to go outside and take my grinder to it and just customize this bracket to make it to where it looks super nice and clean. So, that's what's next on the agenda. she blows can't stop won't stop took some time but we got it done check this out fully customized and fitting like a glove I got it super close to the TV I got our handlebar on there I got our sound bar that was oversized ground down everything's ready to Move on to the next step. I'll have to say that was a lot of work, but I'm pretty satisfied with the results. I did get our mount up here into the studs, right here. And then I put our hydraulic mount on the back bracket and then attached this bracket to the mount. And now we're working on putting on these little felt pieces to cover it up so you don't see the wires. And then we'll bring the wires down like that in the mount and get the TV up here on the wall. It's this thin. We pick it up to mount it and the TV like wobbles. It's so thin. And then it just clings to the wall. All right guys, we're moving right along. This project is looking good. We got all our in ceilings in. We got our 640D mounted below the TV. That was a huge pain, but look at how nice it turned out. I even was able to get the bracket on there for the arm control. Mantle mounts installed, all the wires tied up real nice behind it, and Grayson did an awesome job connecting the receiver over here to their entertainment console. And I'm gonna show you how it works. Literally, you can grab it with one hand and just pull it down like that. And that just gives you a much nicer viewing angle depending on where you're sitting in the room. So if you look here, see all our wires are looking nice and neat. We bundled up the spare cat cables, the two cat six for future use in case he wants to put in a, a bail-in or hardwire the TV or use it for IR control. You can see we have our two holes here, one for power and one for our lines to come out. HDMI and optical, audio return out of the TV in case he wants to, wants to use the smart TV. And uh, we put the magnetic grill or kind of magnetic, magnetic on the back side here and here and then it's acoustic on the front. Looks pretty good. And here's the receiver. We have the five channel system hooked up on the main zone and then out here on the patio, 
We have zone two hooked up, which Grayson installed. You can see Grayson's working on getting the TV mount on the back for the patio. And we're gonna get that mounted up here. But those end ceilings were kind of a pain because you see the little seam right there. He had to cut them out a little bit, but got them nice and flush up against the ceiling. I'm happy with how it turned out. Like yeah. that. Throw the TV up and then onto the media room. So whenever we're mounting into concrete, we use tap cons, which are specifically designed for mounting into concrete. You can see we got the level on there to level. make sure that everything lines up nice and straight. guys we're moving right along with this project we're moving on to the theater room and we're going to be installing a hundred inch screen with a clip Shatmos def tech 51 and a fp 6040 i'm gonna go ahead and uh show you what's going on grayson's over here getting the screen put together as we speak how you doing gray yeah, yeah so this particular screen guys uh, it does have uh tap tensioning so like these little guys uh, are spread out where you see the arrows all the way along um, it has nice steel connectors on the side solid aluminum all the way down and then uh, there's these steel rods here that uh, dragonfly includes that go between the screen and the tabs that keep it extremely tight so these little guys clip right on making sure that over the life of the screen there is no potential for sagging or wrinkling All right guys, you can see Grayson just cut the in-ceiling speaker in, put his template on there, marked it out, cut it with the sheetrock sole, and now we're inserting it into the ceiling. All right, and here we go. We are screwing it in. When you're a pro like Gray, it's as easy as that. Just teleports in. All right, Greg, you want to show them how that tweeter works? Yes, it's aimable. We're going to point it. Right, show, show me how that bad boy moves around. Ooh, ooh, very nice, ooh. very nice. Ooh, I just, ooh. It, it. I think the whole woofer moves as well, huh? Maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Look at that. The whole woofer. That's incredible. Yeah, so you guys can aim the... The speaker, the woofer itself, as well as the tweeter towards your target seating area to maximize performance. All right, this is the Pro 16 RC installed. You guys can see Grayson did a wonderful job putting that in. Looks extremely clean. And now he's working on putting in the other one. So the way this works is you trace out your template just like that. And then once you trace out your template, you cut it with your sheetrock saw and insert the speaker right into place. And now we just gotta get our rears pulled down and our projector and screen put up. All right, moving along guys. We got our 100 inch high contrast gray screen mounted on the wall. We had to remove the sconces, unfortunately. Uh, the customer had ordered this. We didn't do a consultation on this one. He just ordered right off our website. Um, so whenever we showed up, he had measured to the inside of the screen when he ordered this package instead of to the outside. So what he's gonna do is just have his electrician come by and move this over to here um, or pl plate them, which is what I recommended so there's not screen, uh, a light bleeding into the screen. Uh, it's up to him, but we were able to get it up there on the wall. Everything's looking really good. Center speakers up, towers are hooked up, all the wires hidden down through the wall. Now we're gonna work on the rear speakers and getting our projector mounted up on the wall, which I already got the projector mount on. Show you what we're working with over here. Got our 
60 40 looking real sharp this does have a lens cover here on the front and the chief mount that comes with it and grayson is working on getting some screws so that we can mount it up here on the ceiling right there and there's a smurf tube in place so we're gonna just fish our wires right back to our termination point over here in the closet all right boys we got grayson on the reel here he's got a big one on the hook Woo! all right here we go reel it in gray oh, oh man we're getting a little short on the leash here all right and are we gonna make it oh perfect i'd have to say that's perfect we'll take it all right guys i want to show you this before i put the back cover on the 6040 we did run ir control for our pro control 24R and the pro link so that everything's radio frequency. So this little sensor, I'm just gonna stick down here and conceal everything hidden behind in the back panel. This back panel does not come with the 5040s. Uh, the 5040s are also white. Just keep that in mind guys. Same exact specs though. Uh, this one just has the longer three year warranty, projector mount bulb and what I just told you. We also uh, put on the ceiling here, a surge protector. You always wanna surge protect your devices to verify that if you do get hit by lightning, at least you're protecting yourself. You can see over here, we did the same thing for the DevTech towers, put them on a surge protector, and we are gonna be doing the same thing for our sub, which is gonna go over here, the uh, SPL 120, which we just got unboxed. Here we got the And uh, we have the Paisley. Dream Media Helper here. The helper, manager. Hey, how you doing, Paisley? Hey. Hey, buddy, oh, <laughs> you're so cute. <laughs> The lines yeah, connected. they're it's looking perfect. really good. Nice work, Gray. Thanks. You're getting everything connected in, hardwired in. Keep yeah, it up, brother. Thanks. All right, guys. So I'm running these lines from where they were terminated up top here on the slant to down low, so it gets better performance on his low uh, ground level effects on the surrounds versus the overhead Atmos. So I did a little trick where I fished the fish tape back into this dead space back here, and then grabbed it and fished it down. So now you can see I got my line down here and I can put my plate back on up here. I gotta do the same thing over on this side. All right guys, check it out. We are just getting to the end of this installation. Another really long night, but we powered through. We got the living room knocked out, theater room, patio, everything's looking good. I just gotta do a little programming and then we're gonna do some calibrations and a quick demo for you guys. Check it out. You can see I got my 6040 up there. On the high contrast dragonfly 100 inch we got our def techs across the front and def techs in the rear and then we got the clips overhead for the atmos grayson got the morantz hooked up over here in the closet with all the devices we have the pro control processor roku we put a wireless kit on the uh, spl 120 sub and then we have the sony uh, x700 blu-ray player and the xbox one hooked up charging station for the remote as well. Got a couple more little configurations, programming, get everything nice and tidy, and then we're out of here. We just finished the system off, living room 5.1 with Klipsch. We're using the Professional Series in the Reference Premier 640D with an SPL 120 as our sub. This system turned out beautiful. It's perfect for a big open living room like this. Let me show you what's going on. We got our end ceilings up here, front left, front right, rear left, rear right. Center speaker, and then the subwoofer over there in the corner. And we have that on a um, mantle mount, MM700 over the fireplace here. All the equipment's terminating over here. And I'm just gonna play a quick demo for you guys so you can really appreciate the quality of the audio. They could use a nice big rug and some curtains in here. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the reverberation and the echo is pretty insane. Um, so it's gonna affect the audio performance, but they're just moving in so we can recalibrate later down the road Out here on the patio If you look we also got our in ceilings in and they look really sharp and The TV mounted over the fireplace. This is just a typical install guys We do this on a daily basis and uh, we have all different types of solutions for every different scenario All right, let's do the demo
yeah, it's a long day, but we just wrapped up this project and it turned out beautiful. We went ahead and rewired the entire front system. We pulled down these wires that were pre-wired up top for on walls or in walls and moved them down to the bottom and hooked up the customer's own DevTech towers that have built-in subs in the bottom. Same thing over here on the front left, DevTech towers. We got some low end on the, the base down there and then we got the uh, Pro Center 2000, which we also wired. We ran it through the Smurf tube, which was terminating up here and running back to the closet. Then we dropped the line down through the wall and made everything nice and clean. What we're doing back here is similar. We had the plates up top and because of the type of speakers that these are hanging on the wall, we didn't want them dangling. So we pulled it down and put them at ear level so that all of the low effects from the um, you know, scar, uh, car screeching around the corner or whatever it may be that's on ground level will be right there at the customer's ear. And then overhead, we have uh, some Klipsch Pro 16 RCs for the overhead effects, rain, thunder, anything coming from above your head. This is a 5.1.2 or technically you can call this a 5.3.2 because there are two subs in these front towers. Here's the main sub. This is the SPL 120 from Klipsch over here in the closet we did do a radio frequency remote so that all of the components can be in here with the doors closed and the customer control it with one button press on a touch screen remote you can see we did consolidate everything down here to one corner there's just some extra cables down here in the corner that were unused but now the customer can use all these shelves for storage um, you can see we just have the uh, Marantz SR5013 7.2 channel receiver we're using it as a 5.1.2 Atmos we have the Roku Ultra, we have the Pro Control Processor, we have a wireless kit on our sub just because the termination was in the front of the room and we had the uh, two towers that had that low end in them so we wanted better dispersion throughout the space. We threw that at the back and it's performing really well. And then if you look over here we have a Sony 4K Blu-ray player, this is the X700 and then an Xbox One. And don't forget in the back there we have a watt box surge protector and a network switch. And the watt box surge protector is gonna filter out any noise in the line as well as protect them from lightning strikes. And the network switch is gonna give them a bit the ability to have the maximum speed, which is very important when you're streaming 4K content. Now, last but not least, if you look over here, we do have a one button press remote. And on the remote, they have the different options laid out that they can choose from. The Blu-ray player, Roku, Xbox, Chrome, and Bluetooth. They hit one button, it turns on everything associated with that device and turns it all to the correct input. Very easy to use and it's not directional, which is nice. And we put a little charging station here for them so that they can just keep it charged all the time. Now, um, on the video side, we are running a Epson 6040. Up here, this is a eShift 4K projector, meaning it is not native 4K, but it is accepting a native 4K signal. And we are going to be doing a little demo of Planet Earth 2 for you guys next in ultra high def. And we are broadcasting onto a Dragonfly 100 inch high contrast gray screen, which is about the max that we could fit in this room. I mean, we literally had this projector pushed all the way against the wall. This is a pretty tight space, but a really nice little system at a very reasonable price point. So um, I hope you guys enjoy our demo. And if you guys would like us to do a theater like this for you and you live in Dallas, give us a call and we'll do the install. If you don't live in Dallas, we have a low price guarantee and free shipping on all products. We have every major manufacturer to choose from, whether it's Klipsch, Martin Logan, Kef, just to name a few on the speaker side. On the receivers, we have Onkyo, we have Marantz, we have Denon, and the list goes on and on. If you guys would like to purchase an item, give us a call. Make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below. This is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. Thanks for watching. You can adjust the jungle is Eden. It covers less than 6% of the Earth's surface, but it's home. It's a primate like us. And these forests in Madagascar are its time. A staggering variety of species and countless individuals are striving for space and food. Extraordinary. Again.
overhead. <laughs>